There is apparently little concern in Washington, D.C. as the annual deficit, for a single year, mind you, approaches $1 trillion for the first time since the hit the panic button days of the Great Recession. Except that now huge deficits are coming during great Trump economic times. Moreover, as the Congressional Budget Office has forecast, the debt load is expected to rise to 125% of GDP over the 20 years. That's higher than the U.S. debt-to-GDP ratio during World War II. But perhaps the most striking aspect of the growing debt is the fact there really is no end in sight, and the U.S. has no chance of ever paying off the debt. So what is the national debt as a percentage of the federal government's income? Income, in this case is the federal government's tax revenue. And it turns out by this measure, we're in uncharted waters. In fact, the national debt is now 11 times annual federal revenue. And as far as I can tell, that's the highest it's ever been. In 1945, the national debt was $251 billion, and tax receipts were $45 billion, meaning the national debt was 5.6 times tax revenue that year. Specifically, in 2018, the national debt $21.4 trillion was 10.9 times the size of annual tax receipts $1.9 trillion. That's even higher than what it was during the dark days of the stimulus following the Great Recession. In 1981, on the other hand, the total debt load was only two and a half times annual tax receipts. Total U.S. debt including all forms of government, state, local, financial and entitlement liabilities comes close to 2,000% of GDP, according to A.B. Bernstein. The biggest potential load comes from entitlements, but is being pressured from rising levels of federal government debt as well. The warnings about potential debt hazards come as the total federal debt outstanding has surged to $22.5 trillion. A debt reform advocate says now is the time for the U.S. to tackle the issue, before recession hits. Total potential debt for the U.S. by one all-encompassing measure is running close to 2,000% of GDP, according to an analysis that suggests danger but also cautions against reading too much into the level. A. B. Bernstein came up with the calculation, 1,832%, to be exact, by including not only traditional levels of public debt like bonds but also financial debt and all its complexities as well as future obligations for so-called entitlement programs like Social Security, Medicare and public pensions, if a household has an income-to-debt ratio like the federal government, that would mean an annual income of $100,000 and a debt load of $1 million. At current debt level, debt per citizen $68,369 and debt per taxpayer $183,136. The more Trump borrows from his bosses, the more you and your children are going to pay for it plus interest. Putting all that together paints a daunting picture but one that requires nuance to understand. Paramount is realizing that not all of the debt obligations are set in stone, and it's important to know where the leeway is, particularly in the government programs that can be changed either by legislation or accounting. We are quickly approaching a situation where we have dug ourselves a debt hole which is doing to have profoundly negative effects on the economy for probably decades going forward. Moreover, as the Congressional Budget Office has forecast, the debt load is expected to rise to 125% of GDP over the 20 years. Debt and political corruption are inextricably related. Since no one is expected to pay the tab, corruption is wide open, full speed ahead. Congress will never address spending priorities as dictated by the stark reality of limited economic resources while they still have debt as a source of dollars to spend. They will keep spending until the Ponzi scheme collapses. The president has already acquiesced to multiple debt ceiling increases without forcing Congress to live within its means. He could be part of the solution, but so far, he has only contributed to the problem. Given past history it is clear that at some point, this house of cards must come crashing down. U.S. debt can be paid off, but only in the case of hyperinflation. It is easy to pay off trillions in debt when a loaf of bread costs hundreds of millions. Look at the recent history of Zimbabwe. The only problem is that when this occurs no nation will accept the US dollar. We will be on our own, isolated in the global economy we sought to promote. Chaos will reign and millions will starve. Not an attractive scenario. Because we have a debt-based monetary system. There is interest that needs to be paid on every dollar conjured into existence. It is impossible to pay off the debt without imploding the system. USA is imploding. What's new? 
That's why we need NIRP. Only massive inflation can offset the catastrophic debts. I can't help but wonder if the world as we know it is due for an apocalyptic disaster, an asteroid strike or such. The power that be are aware of this and have taken the trillions of dollars that are unaccounted for to build their underground bunkers, not caring about anything but their own survival. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.